Hello there, and welcome to another VS Code live event. I'm your host, Brian Clark, and I'm so happy you're joining us because we got a lot of fun in store in this session. Before we get deep into that, some quick reminders. Make sure you like it. I'm just kidding. No, don't worry about that. The quick reminders are um, we have a meetup group, which there should be. Do we have a link to that? I'm, I'm controlling things today, so bear with me today, folks. There it is. Thank you. Uh, Alessandra's got on, on that. So there's the meetup group that you can sign up so that maybe you can't make it to the live event um, or you, you need to schedule ahead of time. You could sign up with the meetup group and that'll give you calendar invites and reminders and that kind of stuff. But it's okay if you don't make it live to where we can hear your questions for our presenters. Well, you can watch the recordings that will be up on YouTube. That is the VS Code YouTube um, account. I see we have a message. I guess Learn TV is not working, Alessandro. Uh, VS Code YouTube. There it is. YouTube.com slash code, where all of these will be recorded and stored and available for your later viewing so you can catch up. And maybe even if you were here live, you could use it as a reference to remember what was shared in the live event. Uh, on top of that, the VS Code team is on TikTok. I know. Interesting. What are they doing on TikTok? You might be pleasantly surprised. You can learn a lot of stuff on TikTok in general, but in particular, you can learn about cool new things with VS Code and just have some fun and good laughs there. Um, it's very, very fun account and the team's doing a great job with that. So if you're on that platform and interested, check it out and uh, maybe you'll learn something. All right. Without further ado, today's presenter we have is Mason from software.com. Who's going to be showing us a little bit of what they call code time and music time. I'm very interested in this space and, and uh, I really want to improve my code time. And I like that uh, we can add some music time into that as well. So how yeah, are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. How are you this morning? I'm uh, chipper. Very chipper. Mm -hmm. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, what are you going to be showing us today? Why don't you take it away and let's hear about code time and music time. All right. Yeah. So for a quick intro, my name is Mason. I work at software.com. And yes, that's the actual domain that we're at. Uh, you can find us at software.com. And uh, yeah, I know. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. And we build tools for developers that uh, do automatic time tracking. And specifically with what we're going to talk about today, it is we've got a, a set of tools that can help you know when your best code times are, help you protect it, and help you stay into flow, both with eliminating some distractions, as well as picking the right tunes to code to based on data, which is uh, kind of a new way to look at your music. So uh, if we want, we can dive right in. Sounds good. Cool. All right, so I'm going to show you a quick tour of what we do here at software with our code time extension. Of course, you can find it in the marketplace. And uh, it's code space time in whenever you're searching for it. So just to start out, what we do is uh, install this, and it will automatically start doing some time tracking and start tracking some of the behaviors that are going on. Now, when I start talking about tracking and automation and all that stuff, the first question that comes to my mind is how's the security handled for this and what are they actually reading? So whenever we look at your activity inside the editor, what we're taking is like counts of things, how many keystrokes were counted, lines removed, added. We're never reading any of the code. We're never sending any of your code anywhere. And things that we would need like a file name or project name, we actually do a one-way hashing with a Blake2B uh, hashing algorithm before we send it up and aggregate anything on it. So we're. I'm really careful about how I treat the data here because I know that people care, people know what's going on uh, inside of this type of stuff. So uh, it's, you know, we're, we're trying to be ex as diligent as we can to make sure that uh, we're respecting your privacy and your security with, with these tools. So, you know, what we're doing is we're tracking, um, uh, you know, editor behaviors, opening files, closing files, editing, actually impacting the code, whether it's deleting or, or adding. And uh, we're classifying those into different sessions, you could say. So we've got code time and active code times. So code time being the overall, uh, and actually, let me put the dashboard up to show what I mean by that. So uh, if we look at 
today I've had 11 minutes of code time so far, meaning I've been in the editor looking around, not really changing anything for 11 minutes so far. Uh, active code time, zero so far. It's early over here in California. And yesterday I had a little bit, mostly just reading, doing research. Uh, last week, you can see some stats. I had two hours and six minutes of active code time for the week. That means that I was actively modifying files, stuff in my code bases. Uh, and then I can see when I was actually doing this and the kind of the ratio between research time in the, the gray here and the blue active code time when I was actually doing the, the typing part of coding. And uh, you know we've got some global averages that are fed from our over 170,000 users that have been on the platform. So you can see kind of where that, uh, what most people are doing uh, there. And then uh, top projects. So like where I was spending my time last week so that I can know specifically where my time actually went. So I was working on the webhook service a lot. It's one of our services that we have. And you know you can check out all the definitions here about what these things mean. And, uh, and you can get to this dashboard. It's gonna give you real-time stats anytime that you want it from right in our sidebar that we've got here. So click on the paw, it says code time. You've got dashboard, you can split it by projects. If you wanna split out project summaries, so you can select which ones you want to look at over some time frame, and it'll give you a report for that. We've also got a lot more on software.com to check out. But before we do that, I wanted to talk about this big blue button that's right here that says enter flow mode. So one of the things that I was really excited about building this was that you know we have a chance here to not just track stuff, but we can also help and take the data that's we're, that's, that we're tracking and use it to help the day-to-day -day, um, in real time. So one of the things that you know we've always known, I think, as developers, is that distractions and uh, you know notifications and pings coming in while you're in kind of that that highly productive state when you've built that mental model in your mind and it's uh, you know you've got everything there, any sort of ping or someone tapping you on the shoulder you lose all of that and then you got to rebuild it and then go back into it. So we built this thing called flow mode that with a click of a button, it's going to do a few things. So it will, I've got it set up to take my editor to full screen. You can also enter Zen mode or just not mess with it if your setup is the way you want it. And uh, it will mute Slack notification so we can connect to that. We're also working on a Microsoft Teams connection so that we can manage notifications from there. And uh, and also set up away messages and a little icon, which we'll see in a moment, on your status so that everyone else knows that you're in flow mode as well and, and not to bother you at the moment. So we'll just click this. As you see, it takes me to full screen mode. And if I switch over to Slack, we'll see that I've got this purple dot right up here that says code time until 10.08. And I'm away. Uh, I'm not going to get any notifications here, and that's going to keep me uh, from getting kind of pulled out of my coding session. And when I'm so, it'll automatically expire in two hours. That's configurable as well. Or you can just click that button. Exit flow mode takes you back. It uh, brings you back online in Slack. You see, now I've got a green dot, and we're back into communication mode. Uh, you could say so. Super cool tool there. People that use it do really like it. We've had someone, we posted about this on our website, someone automated their room lighting and their phone notifications and everything to this as well. So whenever they enter flow mode, it mutes everything across all of his devices and it turns his lights dark purple <laughs> and like sets the entire mood for the whole room that he's working in, uh, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, so yeah, and we can look at some of the settings that we've got here. If you want it, oh yeah, uh, quick note at the this thing at the top here. We're testing internally for an automatic flow mode. So based on what we see in your current coding session, we have a machine learning algorithm running that does principal component analysis, basically takes all the inputs and lays it along a vector to give a score. Uh, the only thing that, that's scoring is like, 
does it look like you are kind of accelerating in what you're doing? Basically, you've built that mental model. You're kind of in that flow state. As soon as we see that internally for, for us or our team, we're able to automatically enter flow mode. It'll mute your notifications. It'll take you full screen if you want. And basically, if you forget to click that button, but you keep getting distracted, that will take care of it for you. Which I think is really cool. I'm enjoying it a lot, so we're tuning it, and we'll we'll be able to release that into the the extension soon. Uh, <clears throat> but you can set your your expiration to whenever you want. You could keep it forever if you never want it to expire. Uh, you can control the notifications from Slack. You can change the message. This is actually what I say uh, after every stand up <laughs> as we break. I say it's code time because I don't know weird. Uh, you can do that. You can change it. If you want to go to Zen mode, just click Save. And there we go. Also, we do notify you at the end of every day what your daily stats were. And so, you know, I have mine set, my work hours set to end at 6 p.m. And so at 6 p.m., I get a little notification saying, uh, it's the end of your day, check your data, it'll open up the dashboard so I can see right then what I've been doing for the day. And, you know, the intent there was to kind of give a little bit of permission to go, yeah, your day is done, you can stop, you don't have to work all night, unless you got something going on. I mean, that happens sometimes, um, which you'll see <laughs> in some of my other data that we'll talk about. So before I jump into that, I want to talk about music time. So, you know, we talked about flow mode, which has, you know, it's the kind of our first uh, big feature set in what we call editor ops. So bringing operations and tools and information into the editor, your primary workspace, which VS Code definitely is for me. And uh, also it's just, it's a really great platform to build these sorts of things on. Uh, just very, very extensible, great APIs. So uh, you can, Enter, you know, the flow mode stuff is one of the things in editor ops, having the dashboard available, pulling it in so you don't have to go out to another website. And another big one is what we call music time. So over here on the left, click on these headphones. And I've got uh, full control of music from Spotify in my editor. So I can uh, click this. It'll tell me what's playing right now and give me some controls here. I've also got a big remote right here. So let me open that up a little wider. So I can see exactly what uh, is playing and I can play and stop it because <laughs> uh, that's going in my headphones right there. Uh, I can see recommendations. So familiar songs, you can look at energetic stuff you can look at quiet music. So basically, any it, all of your music discovery is actually now happening in your primary workspace. You don't have to switch around. You can stay in here, stay with your code, and, uh, and not have to leave and do that context switching. Now, one of the things that I think is really cool is that because we were able to see when you're listening to the music and when you're coding, we can correlate what are the most productive songs based on what people are are doing while listening to them. So we have a list that we publish every week called the Software Top 40. And you can find it here in the editor as well as on software.com slash top 40. And it's got the ranked top 40 songs based on average productivity or you know uh, what people are activity levels while listening to it. So League of Legends is number one for whatever reason. Uh, well, I think I know why it's... Uh, it's good people listen to it. Uh, Hans Zimmer, so you know you can see there's a lot of similarities in like these long, a lot of instrumental uh, stuff. Of course, there's pop music in here as well, Dua Lipa and some Daft Punk. Um, but you can see exactly what people are listening to and what's been most productive. So you can get a playlist right from here and say you like this song, you can get recommendations from that and then it will uh, build you a custom playlist based on a song that you like, and then you can go from there and you can control all of it from within VS Code, which I think is super cool. You can even check your own metrics for, 
uh, what is most productive for you. So here's songs that for me, you get a little <laughs> um, insight into my musical tastes. Uh, for rank one, for the, it's ranked on productivity. So you're looking at uh, all the stuff that I've been listening to recently ranked by that uh, flow score that we were talking about with that the machine learning algorithm creates. And uh, yeah, it's just a ton of cool stuff in here that you can, uh, you can check out and it, we're gonna map out basically where my songs hit on acousticness and a, bu a bunch of cool stuff that you can check out uh, and you can nerd out too, which I really like doing. So if that's not enough for you, if you want some more data, we've got more on software.com, which I'll open up here. So this is gonna open up our dashboard and we've got views here for individuals as well as for teams that are aggregated and anonymous. So uh, if you look at like, here's me for the week so far. And if we look back to the previous week, we'll see exactly what we saw in the editor. So that Saturday coding session, which, you know, I didn't do anything on Friday, so I kind of switched it out there, but maybe I need to keep an eye on that. Um, and, you know, I'm the CTO. I have a lot more meetings than I have coding time. That's just kind of the way it is. Um, that's, that's the job. So that's what I see here. And so for an individual, for, you know, an IC or someone who's meant to be coding, like that's your job, you might see this and go, whoa, I'm meeting way, way too much. And it's hindering me from getting work done. Now you've got the data to actually show that relationship right here. And if you wanna dive in further, go to explore tab, you're gonna see lots more detailed data as well as trends. So we can see my daily active code time, my seven, rolling seven day average, my rolling 90 day average versus global, which is believe it or not, active code time, like actually editing about an hour and a half a day is the daily active, uh, is the average on the global uh, data set. So, you know, that myth of, that you probably understand isn't real, but that other people outside of development think that developers just code all day and just sit in a dark room typing. It's like an hour and a half that we actually get like actual coding done. Everything else is, is mental work, it's prep work, it's research. It's an hour and a half of typing. Um, so looking at this, you can see my trends. I've got you know this big bump here where we're releasing something and then I went into planning mode, another release, planning mode. So you can kind of get a sense of what's been going on in your life over the past uh, 90 days there. Same with code during work. So this is kind of bifurcating the hours that you can set of what are your typical work hours and showing you how much are you actually spending during that time and how much is out, which is you know, shown here. So the, the dark blue box is showing me the coding time that I had during work hours. And then the light blue is how much outside. So some days like Tuesday, it's a bit out of balance here. So I should probably take a look at what's going on there and see if I can adjust something so that I'm not working so many hours outside of typical hours on Tuesday nights, apparently. Um, same with meeting time, you get a trend. Mine keeps going up. <laughs> um, and then daily meeting time versus day of week, uh, oh, sorry, by day of week versus active code time. So this one's really interesting because the relationship that you would expect is here, of course, in the data where more meetings equals less active code time. So, you know, the, the dark blue bar here is active code time. The gray bar is meeting time. If you look at when they separate, when meeting time goes up, active code, active code time goes down. Uh, when meeting time goes down, active code time goes up. It's really just about the proportion of how you're spending your day. Um, again, none of this is a surprising, but I think really seeing, seeing it in data and seeing what it really is, I think is empowering. It helps you to either change your own behaviors or to help your team change behaviors so that it can be a more balanced uh, uh, setup for you. Like for me, this is probably the right 
balance for me. Being the CTO, I've got to do more meetings than I do coding. I still get to code, so that's a good sign. If it all drops off, then I know something's out of balance there. Um, but you know, for me, this is good. For someone who's uh, you know an IC and you've got stuff that you're trying to build or you're early on in a product build out and it's like, it's just build time, this is probably not the right ratio that you would want. And then this one that is the, the big lesson for me is what are your top code times for the day? Globally, it's from three to four. So if you look at this gold line, and I'll ignore that blue line for a second. Uh, if you look at the gold line here, you can see that you know, you've got two major sort of humps on this line. One is a morning session from about 10 to noon, and then another from you know two to five, but the, really like the principal hour there is three to four. Those are the times that people generally have the most code time and get the most work done during that time. But although you can see that it does extend into the evenings, you know, quite a lot here. Nothing really going on early morning. Uh, it's a pretty steep ramp there as people come online, um, but kind of a, a steady, steadier, flatter decline in the evenings. Uh, so you can kind of get a sense of people's general behavior in the world of development, which is, again, kind of what you would expect. Um, but it actually, you know, when I first built this, I was actually expecting the evening time to be much bigger, maybe because that's what mine is. So that's probably my bias there. Um, but what we see is actually, you know, the, the afternoon time is prime coding time. So if your afternoon is also your prime meeting time, obviously you've got a conflict and there's something that you should work out there with your team uh, to figure out how you can make those meetings go elsewhere instead of your prime coding time. Um, which, you know, I, apparently I still have that on mine as well. Uh, I just also have this bad habit of staying up here. Um, and that's something that I need to work on. So what if you are trying to, you know, put more time here, what are some tools that you can use? Obviously you've got flow mode. You can enter into that whenever you're doing it and it'll block out notifications. You can also set calendar blocks. So this connects to Outlook calendar as well as the Google calendar, and it can show you all the meetings that you've got, and we're pulling this from the API. We're not storing any of this data on our servers. And then we'll show you your code time sessions as they come in. So you can see when you were coding for what duration of time. And then we've got these dark green boxes, it's like suggested code time, didn't quite fit there. Uh, and you can protect your code time. So basically what's going on is we're analyzing your previous sessions and when they were, finding spots in your calendar that are open and asking you if you want to preserve that time for just coding so that no one else can put additional meetings on your calendar. You can start to block out big chunks of time to get into that flow state. And you can have that repeat forever. You can just be for a day, save that. And then it's now on my calendar as protected code time. And everyone will see that I'm busy during that time because I'm setting that aside to get my coding done. Uh, and just as further evidence of me staying up late, there's some sessions here a bit too late in the evening. Uh, I need to stop that. I've also got reports here for as a pro feature. You can pay for that if you want. Um, and you know you can export all of your data over custom time ranges. You can do it by specific projects and uh, all sorts of stuff. People that are consultants or contractors really like this feature because it helps them automatically build out invoices and provide the evidence for it without having to click start and stop on a timer app because uh, everything is automatically tracking and, and, and going through that way. Uh, so that's a bit of what's going on. We've also got our team view of this. So this is our internal software team. This is the team that I'm on. Uh, you can see all of our stats here. This is average per developer that you're seeing the stats up here. So about an hour 54 per day. Um, and then you can see how that's trending for this week. And then you got code time and active code time here, the global averages, meeting times. Obviously my team codes a lot more than I do. 
as you can plainly see from the two dashboards there. Uh, and then again, the Explorer views, as we saw on my data, we've got all of that for your team data as well. So you can see exactly how your team is going. Are they burning really hard like we were here? And you know that might be a really good thing. If it's out of a normal trend, it might be that you're starting to burn a little too hard. So this gives you, you know, an observation, a, a way to see what's happening in development so that you know you can apply your context to it and figure out if that's if that's a positive thing, if that's you know like ooh, we need to cool off a bit because we're gonna burn out, those sorts of things and and figure out what's going on. So a lot of cool things again, meeting time during work hours, um, all of that. We, our meetings are going up. Uh, probably should look at that, see what's going on there. And uh, yeah, and we can see that you know for the team, the active code time to meeting time is inversed, which is good. So more coding than meeting. I would prefer that as well. Uh, but you know that's my job is is to do the meeting part. Um, and then top time code, top code times. I said that really oddly. Top code times uh, kind of matches the global uh, averages. Ours is a little bit later than the global, four to five rather than three to four. Um, but overall, looking pretty healthy there. So, a lot of cool stuff that you can see for you and for your team. And again, you can see for all of this team data, no one's personal data is being exposed. You're not seeing like a stack rank of performance or anything like that. That's not what we do. Um, I, I, there's other tools that do that that I don't recommend. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's what we do here at Software. So that's all coming from the code time extension, hooking up to your Outlook calendar, hooking up to your Google calendar, uh, music time, and all sorts of cool stuff. And there'll be you know, we're constantly trying to figure out better ways to help developers in the day-to-day -day with our new kind of suite of tools inside the editor ops uh, field. And uh, yeah, that's that's what I've got. And I think I'm like right at toward the end of my time. At you this did point. good. Excellent. Right. That, that was all fantastic, Mason. Thank you so much. Uh, it's really exciting and interesting uh, stuff that you all are doing there with codetimeoffer.com and uh, music time. So some, we got a couple minutes for questions before we need to get going. Um, one I have is I would love to know more about the the person that did those integrations with their lights and stuff to like really set the tone for like, I need to focus because that's mm -hmm. one of the biggest things we, you know, as you were really illustrating through everything today is developers trying to find that time to be able to get into that flow state um, and, and get their work done. So what are there ways that people can, uh, you know, create integrations i know you showed like slack and and different calendar integrations is there ways to extend upon that as well yeah so uh we're we don't have an api on it just yet but what he did is he pulled from because we're controlling slack in that instance uh you can get connected to their webhooks for that so he connected to the do not disturb because that's what we're setting there okay. uh, event and then connected to that. We are going to be building out um, custom web hooks for flow mode and building out an API for that to extend it. Because like, there's a lot of things that we can think of, but there's a way more that the community can think of and develop. Uh, and so like that was like a, f a really good example of, oh yeah, we really need to support that because people are people want to do that. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, one more, one more question for you. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of discussion that tends to happen in our industry about how, as you know, time goes on in our careers, we end up spending more majority of our time actually just reading code and not so much writing code. Mm -hmm. With the data that you've all have seen, is, has that kind of like, do you have some insights that you could share around that that like helps support that a bit more? Yeah, I mean. It, it is very true. Like if you looked at um, you know, when we were looking at our data, you could see that the code time, which is the you're in the editor, that's the total amount of time is a is a large proportion compared to uh, the active code time. So, you know, what we see in the data, is if you break it down into a session instead of just like a total, then you'll see the research time before the active code time starts. And then it kind of ramps up in terms of velocity. So you're, it's 
it's going through kind of what you would what you would think. It's you're reading, you're building the model in your mind, you're figuring out where you're going to go edit. You start your edits, you kind of pick up pace, and then it goes down as you like wrap it up and write commits. Um, but that research time is is still essential to the entire process. So it's it's not like it's better to just do. Uh, oh, we're out. <laughs> just we're just out on, do the on one platform. We're still okay. live on another platform, so we got like another minute or so. Cool. So it's you know it's it's not just that you want to be coding instantly whenever you open the editor. Uh, it's important to have the full range of activity there, so that you know what you're doing before it happens, and it shows a better uh, better outcome whenever they have that research time. Awesome. So I'm sure if folks have more questions. I'm sure they will have more questions. Where can they go to? to find out more about this all. Yeah, so uh, go to software.com, of course. We've got blog posts there. We've got a great newsletter. Um, and then we're on Twitter at uh, Software HQ. And uh, you can find, I usually post stuff on LinkedIn. So linkedin.com slash Mason McLeod. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mason. And yeah, thank you. you again soon. Awesome. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Sorry we went a little bit over time in this particular event, but these things happen. It's proof that it is live that we have these. Uh, quick reminders, if you miss some things or you want to go back and reference some stuff, you can go to youtube.com slash code to see the recording of this. And for future events, be sure to sign up and look at the meetup.com VS Code event uh, page or group rather, uh, so you can anticipate and plan ahead for the next ones. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it and got some value out of it. Happy coding.